Okay, most people uh, find volume quite a bit easier than surface area. And so we're going to talk about uh, volumes of prisms and cylinders today. We'll do a little bit more with this tomorrow. And then we'll transition into the volume of cones and pyramids. And then we'll take a look at volumes of volume and surface area, actually, of spheres. And then uh, that'll pretty much wrap up the chapter. Then we've got to come back and clean up some stuff. We've got Jenga to do. We've got buckyballs to do. We've got the flagpole to take care of. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to, to wrap things up with. Okay? So let's start with a little warm-up from what we've done the last couple of days. Find the surface area of that figure, please. It's entirely up to you. I can work with either. If nothing else, be sure to copy down the picture because we're not going to go over it yet. We're going to save it for the end of the slideshow. So if you don't get the calculations completed, that's okay. Just make sure you have the picture and the measurements. don't have an answer yet, that's all right. Let's move on. We'll, like I said, we'll come back to this at the very end of the slideshow to see how you did. We're going to start talking about volume today. Volume is the amount of space that fits into a solid or an object. Or another way to think of it is, how many unit cubes will fit into a figure? So when we calculate the volume of, let's say, a cylinder today, we're actually calculating how many unit cubes will fit into a cylinder. But they don't fit nicely. So we have to come up with other ways to do it. If we start with something like that, that's fairly easy. What's the volume of that figure? Leo. 24. How much? 24. Why? Because uh, the height is 2, the width is 3, and the depth is 4. So it's like 3 times 2 times 4. All right. Any other answers? Yes? That's how many um, marks the like cubes that's how many unit cubes are inside of it. They're all the same thing. Okay. That's easy. But what if we look at something different? What if we're calculating, let's say, a triangular prism like this guy? It's not so easy to figure out how many little boxes are going to fit into it. And so we need to come up with a different method. I will show you a formula in a second, but I want you to think of it as a, in a different sense. We're going to take this base, which happens to be yellow. It's a little yellow triangle. And think about this object as a bunch of yellow triangles stacked up on top of each other. So for instance, I've got a stack of papers over there. If I take one of those papers off the stack, it has almost no thickness. Okay, again, pretending that a piece of paper has no thickness. But as you stack a whole bunch of pieces of paper together on top of each other, all of a sudden it starts to generate a shape. The same is true with that book next to it. You take any one of those pages out of the book, it's virtually no thickness, but you put a bunch of them together, and now all of a sudden we generate a three-dimensional object. So when calculating volume, I think it helps to visualize things that way. How did I get that triangular prism? I took a bunch of triangles and I stacked them on top of each other. How many triangles did I stack on top of each other? Well, that's what we use the measurement of the height for. So I take that base and I stack them up on top and all of a sudden I get a prism. And therefore, we can find the volume of that prism by taking one of those bases and multiplying it by how many of them I have stacked up on top of each other. 
Again, capital B is the area of the base and H is the height. This process works for any prism, any cylinder. A cylinder would be like a stack of quarters. You take one quarter, it has almost, well, a quarter has thickness, but it's pretty negligible. But you stack a whole bunch up on top, and all of a sudden you've got a cylinder made of quarters. That having been said, find the volume of that guy. And notice it's a regular prism, so therefore the base of that figure is a regular pentagon. Screwed up. Okay, that's all right. Erase. You can either erase or clear the whole thing. So if you hit the little X on the on the thing, it'll clear the whole screen. Or if you choose the open circle, that becomes your eraser. Right. Now you got to wait. Hold on. Now you got to click on the red pen again. Just click on the red thing. There you go. Now you're golden. All right. Uh, I would maybe throw this in here, not maybe, I would throw that in there. Okay. Probably not the way that most of you did it. Most of you probably did 1 half times 3.4 times 2.5 times 10. They give you the same results. We just happen to have enough information to find the area of that triangle, which he then uh, split the pentagon into five parts. And I uh, got the area of the base and multiplied it by the height. Yes, sir? Would it be uh, meters cubed? Is that only for volume? Because 340 meters cubed. Correct. 
That's right. Or cubic okay. meters if you prefer. All right. Any questions? Pretty easy? Good. The area of the bases should be pretty straightforward because we did that all last chapter. And again, just thinking of that as a base times how many of them you have stacked up on top of each other, it doesn't make a difference if we have a prism or a cylinder. It's just a different shape base. So what does this formula become? Uh, pi r squared times height. Clickety, clickety, clickety. Correct. But again, starting with the general formula, base times height works fine too. Because you know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Pi r squared times h gives you the area of, sorry, the volume of that cylinder. Okay, so we're good. Nothing changes. Take the area of one of those things and then calculate how many of them you have stacked up on top of each other. Now what happens if they're not stacked straight up and down? So for instance, if I take my stack of papers over here, clean them up a little bit. Theoretically, what shape is that? Rectangular prism. What if I do this? It took me years to work out this demo. Now what is it? Can you fix your hair? I keep thinking you're raising your hand. Don't, it's okay. I'm not being critical. I'm just I keep seeing moving out of the corner of my eye. What is that? Yeah? Well, like a, some kind of parallelogram prism? No. Because notice the base oh, okay. is still a rectangle. If the base shape changed, which I can't do, I mean, I can, but it would make a mess. George? An oblique rectangular prism. Do we all agree the surface area changed? Did the volume change? No. You sure? Yes. Explain. Yeah. You didn't take anything out of it, like you didn't take any mass out. So the volume would stay the same. No matter how much I angle this? Yeah. You, Do I angle it even more? Yeah. To the point where it's almost tipping over? It hasn't changed? The volume does not change. Hmm. Let's dig people. Yeah, obviously, I'd have to, you know, if I did this, then the volume would change. But with this on here, it doesn't matter if it's angled or not, right? Okay, and what he said is perfect. The area of the base hasn't changed. The height hasn't changed. I've just tilted a little bit, but notice that this height is the same thing as that height. Again, we measure the height vertically. So therefore, we get to something, we'll come back to this in a second, we get to something called Cavalieri's Principle. This is one of the huge weirdnesses. Weirdnesses? All right, one of the, we're going to go with it. In mathematics. So this guy comes up with, uh, with an obvious statement, and everybody thinks it's the greatest thing, and they name a principle after him. So he says, if I have two figures that have the same base and the same height, they have to have the same volume. Is that not obvious? George? If, like, you, uh, like, with the, uh, the rectangular, what if you, uh, like, tilt it so much that the height changes? Like, could you do that? Like, where you can't. You, uh, uh, yeah. Because you still have X number of pieces of paper stacked up on top of each other. Oh, yeah. So the only way, like Nathan said, the only way you could change the height would be to take some paper out of there, which would then, in fact, change the formula. So he said that those two are the same volume which is such an absurdly obvious thing, but obviously he must be the first one that said it or he knew friend, he had friends in high places that they named the principal after him. What's more relevant to us is not necessarily taking a square prism and pushing it over. It'll become more relevant to us when we start looking at two cylinder, I'm sorry, uh, a prism and a cylinder, for instance. You have a, uh, a square prism and you have a cylinder and the bases are the same and the heights are the same, then the volumes are gonna be the same. It's not the most practical theorems ever created because it's so obvious that it doesn't matter. Well, let's go back to this guy. 
Notice the chunk, we're not gonna do this because you can always see, already see the answer, but notice the chunk of information we're missing here is the height, so you have to do Pythagorean theorem. Would you do five squared plus eight squared equals 16 or 10 squared plus eight squared equals 16 squared? Yeah, use the whole 10. Okay, so Cavalieri's done. Do that one. Find the volume of an oblique cylinder with a radius of 15 and a height of 25. I would recommend that you draw a picture that might be helpful. you do good is that what is that in terms of pi 5625 5625 pi which when you multiply out is 17671.46 all right so faith ask her your question now we don't really need to know that it's oblique right Jocelyn um well I just kind of drew it like that because it's said but I don't think you do because you have the height and you know the radius so and notice that height is the vertical height what would you call this distance if i asked you for this what would you call that distance the slant height yeah it's a slant height so it's to be l with the person l or is it l um no check it i think it would be l because we use slant height for l and also notice that we get a little right triangle down here so it is conceivable that you could do a right triangle calculation with L and that distance whatever it might be. Okay, good. That here. All right, let's go back to that. What'd you get, Erica? Um, I didn't Becca, you got it? I didn't uh brunch? Uh, yeah. What do you got? 99 pi. Yeah, yeah. Centimeters squared. Centimeters squared. Which one? Squared. George? I got 81 pi. Yeah, oh, wait, actually. Ooh, dissension in the ranks. I like it. I think that it's uh, 90 pi. Because what I did was I 
had 99 pi, but then I subtracted the two uh, circles on this oh, over But then I realized right. that you shouldn't subtract 18, you have to subtract only one circle. Mm -hmm. it's covered up, so it's 99. Okay. Uh, how many surfaces are we looking for the area of? That was horrible English, but you understand what I'm talking about. There are three. The lateral area of the cone, the lateral area of the cylinder, and one base. Did you include this base? Yeah. So Twice? Yes, I would subtract that base. Well, because when I found the area of the... Come here. Show us. When we start looking at composite figures, or as we look at composite figures, I should say, you have to consider that even though you see some surfaces, they're not going to... Uh, what is that symbol? I wrote the S twice. Do oh. you stutter when you write? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the surface area of the cylinder. Okay. We can see it though, it just keep going. We'll tell you. Okay, so well I included this face here. Well, I should have. Okay. So I would subtract nine. subtracted this one yeah you you count it you have to subtract that twice because it's the bottom of the cone and the top of the cylinder you know what I mean? yeah two so like, you have to get rid of this no, uh, it's like no. this looks like one of cone <laughs> <down. laughs> so you counted this so one Oh, yeah, this when I found right this here, or first yeah. I have this and this, I counted this twice yeah you counted okay. that twice so you, you counted no times so. all right so you like that one better? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, just uh, hand it there or put it down. I don't care. You can do it one of two ways. You can do what he did and calculate all the surface areas and then subtract the things that you don't count or just calculate the surface areas of the things that matter. So notice we would have a pi RL, we'd have a 2 pi RH, and then we'd have a pi R squared. And if you add those things up, you get 81 pi. So like a lot of things we've been doing in the last two chapters, two different ways to solve the same problem. Questions on this guy? Again, think of it as dunking this thing in paint, this surface, would not get painted because it's sandwiched between the other two. We'd get paint on the lateral area of the cone, around the cylinder, 
and the bottom of the shape. Beautiful. We are done. Day four. Quiz on Friday of this week.